My name is Kelly Moy, M-O-O-I-J, and I'm the political chair of the New Jersey League of Conservation Voters. I'm excited to be here today on behalf of LCV to endorse a candidate in the gubernatorial primary. New Jersey League of Conservation Voters is the preeminent political voice for the environment in the state. Within the first two years of existence, NJLCV and its affiliated political action committees, including more recently the state's only environmental super PAC, had already dwarfed by 20 times the total electoral spending of the entire environmental community combined for the prior decade. Since then, we've continued to grow our electoral programs. With each subsequent election, building on our strong track record of winning results. NJLCV was founded in 2010. The goal of the organization is to work to elect conservation champions regardless of party. We're committed to supporting viable candidates who are serious about protecting the environment and ensuring that New Jersey is a great place to live and work for current and future generations. We take our endorsement process very seriously. We pride ourselves on having a transparent, systematic and rigorous process for endorsing candidates. We review candidates' environmental credentials and vision for the state moving forward through research, questionnaires, and interviewing. We require that they answer tough questions about their race and we ensure their commitment to the goals of protecting the state's air, water, and land. But we don't just endorse candidates. We stand with our champions and put boots on the ground. We make phone calls and knock on doors. Through our PAC, we've provided critical staffing support on campaigns. We also invest heavily in educating about the candidates. In the end, we make a difference in the outcome of elections. New Jersey has built a tremendous environmental legacy, but faces significant and growing threats from state and federal regulatory rollbacks to pollution, to attacks on drinking water, to climate change, and much more. This election is critical for New Jersey. As the most densely populated state, we must continue to protect our open space and parks and prevent raids on environmental funds. We must stem the drastic cuts the state DEP has seen to critical staffing that protects our environment and natural resources. We face regulatory backsliding at the state and federal level that will threaten our clean air, drinking water, and public health. With nominations of anti-science candidates at the national level, we can no longer expect to have the federal government as a backstop. As a state with 127 miles of coastline and 83 miles of shoreline along the Raritan and the Delaware, as well as the, de the devastating recent experiences with storms of greater frequency and intensity, we must face the challenge of climate change head on with science and planning and leadership. We need a governor to protect our citizens, current and future, and to fight for the things that make New Jersey a great place to work, raise a family, and do business. The sustainability of our state is inextricably tied to a healthy environment. We're committed to aggressively coming out to make sure the environment is highlighted in this election because the stakes have never been higher for New Jersey. New Jersey can and must once again be a national environmental leader. And now I'd like to introduce Debbie Manns, the chair of the board of League of Conservation Voters. Thank you, Kelly. Now, more than ever, we realize the importance of elections. And now, more than ever, we need an environmental champion in the New Jersey governor's office. We need someone who understands that the choice is not jobs or the environment. It is that you grow the economy by investing in clean energy and clean jobs and green jobs. Phil Murphy understands this. We need someone who protects our public health by pursuing policies that protect our drinking water and the air we breathe. Phil Murphy understands this. We need someone who fights for environmental equality in all our communities, especially those deeply impacted by multiple sources of pollution. Phil Murphy understands this. We need someone who works to protect, to provide access to open space and parks for all of New Jerseyans. Phil Murphy understands this. The New Jersey League of Conservation Voters is honored to be endorsing Phil Murphy for governor in the Democratic primary. Phil Murphy has the experience to bring sustainable, forward-looking policies to New Jersey on the environment, clean energy, climate change, and a green economy. Phil Murphy is committed to protections for New Jersey's air, land, and water. This election is critically important 
And we can make a difference in New Jersey. We can elect a leader who will stand up for our families and our communities. With that, I'd like to introduce Phil Murphy. Thank you. Thank you all. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a way to start the week. Thank you, Kelly, M-O-O-I-J. <laughs> Debbie, where'd you go? Thank you, Debbie Mance. Uh, to your fellow board members, I know Ed is not here. Also to Ed and the extraordinary staff uh, and everyone at the League of Conservation Voters, this is a terrific honor. You are the first endorsement, and I underscore first endorsement from the environmental arena, and I could not be more proud. As it has been noted, this election is, is historic in its nature. It is not only our state's most consequential gubernatorial election in decades, it is also the first statewide election of any kind in our nation in the Trump era. This is time for action. For the past seven plus years, New Jersey's environment has been under attack by an administration more concerned with a narrow political agenda that protected the special interests than the broad long-term interests of our state and of our people. It has been indifferent to climate change, even as the evidence has mounted that our coastal communities are in imminent threat. It has allowed polluters to get out from under their responsibility to clean up the damage that they have done. And it has stymied the growth in clean, alternative energy sources that can not only power our future, but create good jobs, including many good union jobs, along with it. And in Washington, we are faced both with a president who believes that climate change is a hoax created by the Chinese, and the prospect of an EPA administrator who holds the env environment in contempt. I believe our state's future lays in our ability to do both good and do well. And there is perhaps no better opportunity for us to do both than where it comes with our environment. Economic growth and environmental protection are not mutually exclusive. In fact, we must come to recognize that the two go hand in hand. For too long, the people of New Jersey have been fed the false rhetoric that you can either have clean water or a job, but not both. Together with the League of Conservation Voters and the countless New Jerseyans who similarly reject that concept, we will turn that rhetoric on its head, and in doing so, we'll reclaim our state's position as a national leader. We must begin with the basic acceptance that climate change is real. It is a direct threat to our communities, and it is something we can fight back against. I will reinstate New Jersey's participation in the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Since Governor Christie's unilateral action to remove us from that compact, New Jersey has lost out on an estimated $114 million in carbon auction revenues that could have gone to investing in clean energy production and energy efficiency and resiliency projects. We gave up the ability to invest in our state because of the governor's partisan national political interests. No more. My administration will make decisions based on what's best for the next generation of New Jerseyans, not what's best for my or anyone else's next election. We will reinvest in the alternative energy sources we know we need to, to literally power our economy. We proudly have been a national leader in solar, but as it was just reported a few days ago, we shed more than a thousand jobs in the solar industry sector last year alone. One of only four states to do so, even as the demand for solar has remained strong. An aggressive push to secure the solar market could get us those jobs back, plus many more. 
It could grow our sustainable footprint. And more importantly, it could grow our resiliency footprint as we bring online new energy facilities that don't rely on the traditional grid. And in looking to the sky, we must also acknowledge the wind at our back. New Jersey can and must be a leader in transforming our offshore winds into clean, reliable energy. Governor Christie actually had the opportunity to make us that leader in signing the 2010 legislation to create our wind marketplace. But we have taken no action since, even as Rhode Island leapfrogged us to be the first state to make an offshore wind farm operational. We have the wind, the need, and the investors. What we need is a governor willing to make it happen. We also have the potential to power a half a million homes. Wind energy has the ability to take as much carbon out of the atmosphere as 1.1 million cars. As the United States Ambassador to the Federal Republic of Germany under President Barack Obama, I watched one of the world's most advanced economies power itself through renewable resources. There is no reason New Jersey cannot just follow suit and identify a path to 100% clean energy by the middle of the century. And we could take even more carbon out of the air by strategic investments in mass transit and transportation infrastructure to get more New Jerseyans out of their cars. A strong rail network is part of that equation. But so too is a commitment investing in cities and neighborhoods to create walkable, dense, exciting, and sustainable communities that reduce the reliance on cars. And as part of that process, we will have a Department of Environmental Protection that is properly staffed, not just to ensure our people are protected, but also work with businesses that wish to come here to create projects and opportunities and jobs again, in many cases, good union jobs that will benefit our economy and also do right by our residents and our air, our water, and our open space. Governor Christie and President Trump are both from the school of us versus them, that for someone to win, someone else has to lose. That's, that's the way the special interests have cooked it up and it has worked just fine for them. But I'm here to tell you we're going to change that recipe. We need a governor who recognizes that a clean environment is vital to our future and to our economic growth. I will be that governor. I thank the League of Conservation Voters for your strong endorsement and look forward to our future partnership for our state, our people, and our precious natural resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to answer any questions, if there are any, um, and note also Tom uh, Johnson, who is on the phone, in case you have any questions as well, Tom. Is this Tom? That's Tom. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Uh, eight years ago, uh, another environmental group endorsed Governor Chris Christie, who laid out uh, a platform of six issues that he committed to uh, following through on in that same group. And uh, one of them was also Thanks, Tom. So that's a good question. Um, Did you all hear that? <laughs> let, me re let me repeat that question. Uh, Tom asked um, about another environmental group that made a different endorsement eight years ago and endorsed Governor Christie um, and asked what we would do to ensure that Phil Murphy uh, follows through if he is the, um, is, if he's governor, that he'll follow through on his commitments to offshore wind and clean energy. 
Um, so I think I can answer that um, by saying this is the first time that we've been engaged in a gubernatorial uh, primary as, a, as an organization. A new organization started and founded in 2010. We have a very rigorous process for endorsement. Um, and it involves many months of uh, research, questionnaires, interviewing, rigorous interviewing uh, with the candidates. And we are sure, um, based on that and the vision that Phil Murphy has uh, talked to us about, um, that he is committed to this because he sees this as being a successful move for the state, um, both for the environment but also economically. Um, so I think that because he recognizes that indeed climate change is real and we need to do something about that and it's a real and um, pressing threat that we're facing, that he recognizes that we need to do something and also acknowledges that there are tremendous green jobs that can be brought to the state that can buoy and bolster our economy. Would you may, like may to? May I add to please, that? Of Would course. you mind? Um, Tom, it's a very good question um, because talk is cheap, right? It's very easy when you're running for an office uh, to say what needs to be said in order to get people to support you. Um, and so one of the things I would say is I'm told that we all need to get closer together here. Uh, <laughs> feel like we're going on the road here. So glad you're uh, tall. Exactly. <laughs> I know, I feel like this uh, is the first time. <laughs> um, so, so I could just say from my side a couple of things briefly. Number one, we've gotten, we've gotten a chance to kick each other's tires, it's fair to say. So we, this, this, uh, this endorsement process was rigorous, I'm here to tell you. Uh, and part of that is not just what you say in a questionnaire or in an interview, but it's getting to know each other over the past couple of years. And I think even more importantly, looking at your life work. You know, what have you stood for? Uh, you know, in my case, uh, as the United States ambassador to one of the greenest economies, industrial economies in the world, and the things we talked about representing our country uh, or representing President Obama in his general um, environmental agenda over the past uh, many years. Um, I wish my wife were with me. Uh, because she serves as, as a charter founding member uh, of the Climate Reality Project, which is Al Gore's environmental uh, project. So this is something that runs deep in our genes, in our bones. Um, and as I say, I think the question's a great one. Talk is cheap. Uh, the question is, where's, show us the conviction. Show us the level of mutual trust that, that we're in this together. I would also, just in concluding, echo something Kelly said, we're not here today to talk about the economy per se, but if we were, we would say this is an economy in deep crisis, deep crisis. I believe that we can get our economy back on its feet again. We have to grow it and make it fair. It's neither growing nor fair at the moment. In growing it, I think two of the big in engines that we can ignite are the innovation economy and the infrastructure economy. And it so happens that I think the one economy that neatly captures both of those economies is the green economy, doing good and doing well. And I'm a huge believer of that. And we have no choice in our economic, uh, in, in our economic future but to grow it and make it fair again. And I think the green economy is right at the center and sweet spot of that opportunity. Thanks, Tom. I know, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I was just sitting with you. <laughs> um, the, the gas pipelines uh, in the state. What are your thoughts on whether they're? What are your thoughts on whether they should go forward? The idea of a potential moratorium. Yep. How do you view them broadly, and where do they fit in your, your concept of moving the economy forward yep. and the environment? So I say all this in the context of a an economy that is broken, thanks to Governor Christie where there are too few jobs available. Uh, and you see that no more clearly than you see in, the, in our brothers and sisters in, in the trade unions uh, who are at a fraction of the level of work that they had X number of years ago. So that's a context we can't ignore. And I'm angry, uh, frankly, I wake up every day angry that there are, there are too few alternative paths available to say, listen, we've not only got this, this opportunity for you to work in, but we've got five or six other avenues, and that's what I'm going to commit to as governor, that we've got a whole range of, um, of, uh, of, um, uh, of employment opportunities. Um, I have big environmental concerns, obviously. Uh, the, the environmental concerns are real, um, and uh, as are, in many cases, the business case associated with them. You know, I've committed to listening to all sides um, on, on these issues, but they present uh, major challenges. 
I, I want to get back to when we used to have a, ma we've talked about this, a master energy plan in this state where you had a roadmap as to where we're going to go from here until to the future. Um, and I see the renewable piece of our future energy sources as a much, as a much larger component than the fossil fuel uh, representation in our future. Um, and again, at the same time, I want to reiterate, as a parallel matter, I want to be the governor that creates lots of different avenues for jobs, including what we were just talking about in the green space, where you could say, listen, there's an opportunity. I think about the project, for instance, in Hoboken, which would be a big flood remediation project, which the Dutch uh, uh, model, is, is, I guess that's the right way to put it, right? Design. I'm sorry? The rebuild, by the rebuild by design, which is an extraordinary opportunity to, for job creation flood and storm remediation, uh, where you're actually doing good and doing well. You're preventing a future catastrophe such as the one that, that washed through Hoboken, I guess now four and a half uh, years ago. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's an example of something that I think we can see in our future. Um, I've spent a lot of time up with the Highlands uh, coalition. I, I'm, oh, I'm owed a, uh, Carlton's gonna get me down to the Pinelands and, uh, and do a similar visit. I think those are gems in our state. Those are gems that have huge implications for all of us in the state, and we have to do all that we can to preserve their extraordinary uniqueness. There's no other state, by the way, folks probably know this, there's no other state like us that have, as a percentage of the land mass that we have in New Jersey, the densest state in the nation, by the way, that has something that comes close to the Highlands or the Pinelands. Right. 1.2 million acres of preserved land in the state between federal, state, and local. I mean, that, those are sacrosanct gems. Uh, I talk all the time about doing what's best for the next generation, not what's best for the next election. Those exist for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. That's the future of our state. You want to add to anything to this, sure. sir? Well, just um, not only what's good for the next election, so just to add on to that, um, one of the things that we have seen is that the environment is really important to people in the state of New Jersey. It's about quality of life. It's making New Jersey a great place to live and raise a family. Um, so I think that it is something that is successful that voters um, pay attention to and something that moving forward um, we are going to make sure that we are aggressively and actively involved in educating the public about the importance of the environment. Just so I totally have to get closer. <laughs> Tom, any more questions, Mike? Sorry, this Tom. Yeah, That's I have right. one more question. Um, uh, one of the big issues that has um, uh, concerned environmentalists uh, in the past year or so have been attempts, and you just mentioned the Highlands, uh, to prevent that from happening. So the question, just to repeat for everyone, from Tom was in relation to the septic density rules and the other rules that have been um, that would have impacts on the Highlands Act. The Highlands Act, which was signed over 10 years ago to protect one of the most important areas of the state that provides drinking water to over 6 million people in the state of New Jersey, um, just recently um, under attack as a result of proposed rules from this administration, um, which would change the density uh, required and um, impact the amount of C1 streams that are protected within the state. Yeah. The question is, would I, would I push back on that? Would you push back? The, the answer is yes. Uh, I don't think we need a whole lot more color, although we have to get together again here. Uh, I don't think we need a whole lot more color on that. Uh, they're counter to the uh, intention. They're counter to the entire objective of why uh, the things like the Highlands exist. Um, and and, and I, I mentioned a minute ago, in response to a question about energy, uh, lacking a, a master energy plan, we also lack a master water plan in this state. In fact, we, we, we lack a state plan, period. Uh, the last one I think we have that's actually effective, if my colleagues will tell me, is, is 2001. Um, and so uh, I'm a big believer in plans. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a rote, uh, follow, you know, color by numbers, but they give you context. They give you some comfort. Okay, we, 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 we head this out. We, we've decided where we're headed. Um, we're absent an overall state plan. We're absent a state energy plan, and we're absent a state water plan, uh, which must be said. Those are things that we will commit to getting back on the books and updating if they need to be or inventing them from scratch if need be, but we will have them uh, going forward. But the answer, the short answer time to your question is yes, I would push back on that because it's counter to what the intention of the Highlands uh, uh, was originally founded upon.
any further questions? Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, folks. Same color schemes. Yes. So. It really looks more than science fiction. Right? Yeah, I think she did a great job. Uh, uh, really so there's one, one more picture, picture please. About the sign. Yeah. 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 One more picture. Yeah. 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 Ambassador Murphy, we talked earlier about um, the fact that elections have consequences, and this one particularly. I was hoping that you could just elaborate on that a bit for us. First of all, I am thrilled to get the endorsement of the League of Conservation Voters. It's my first one in the environmental space, and that really matters, so I'm incredibly honored by that. Yeah, this is an election that has enormous consequences um, at many levels. We've had over seven years of a governor who has turned his back on the environmental interests and the future and the well-being and the quality of life in this state. We now have a president, as of a few weeks ago, who's hostile to the environmental realities and interests. And we are the first election in his presidency. Uh, I also see, notwithstanding all of what we have to fix and correct, uh, based on the wrong-headedness of Governor Christie's leadership and now of President Trump, I see enormous opportunity. Uh, there's an opportunity to get back to what we used to do so well, and that is lead the nation. Uh, in many areas, including in environmental stewardship, whether that's solar, wind, water, uh, alternative energies. Uh, and I further and finally believe we can do both good and do well. And that means not only being on the right side of history as it relates to the environmental interests and in stewardship, but also uh, finding ways by doing that to propel our economy and create jobs, which we desperately need in this state. Some people talk about uh, a green, uh, green jobs, the environment in one sphere, and a robust economy in another sphere. But that's exactly n that's the polar opposite of what you believe. So talk to me a little bit yeah. about how we can grow the economy and be environmentally friendly at the same time. Yeah, so our friends across the aisle, in particular Governor Christie and President Trump, would lead you to believe it's an us versus them, that it's a zero sum. If you uh, support a given particular environmental policy you take from something else. And they're wrong. 
uh, either they know they're wrong and they're being devious or they just haven't taken the time to understand that that's, that couldn't be farther from the truth. That if you take the time and you're on the right side of history as an environmental steward, as we need to be, by the way, in the densest state in the nation, it is in fact good for our society. It's good for our economy. It's good for the well-being of our state, not just today, but in the generations to come. So I not only do not support that uh, and reject that, that us versus them zero-sum mentality, uh, I would say they're flat out wrong. This is an opportunity. There aren't that many of them, by the way. This is an opportunity to get the, the green economy right is a one plus one equals three moment. We don't have that many of them available. This is one of them. We've lost a lot of, uh, of time in the past seven years with rollbacks and setbacks of various sorts. Um, talk to us a little bit about what your priorities would be on day one. Day one, rejoin Reggie, uh, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, that collection of states uh, would earn money that we could plow immediately into the green economy, into alternative energies. That's one. Uh, I would reignite uh, the impetuses that we can ignite under the solar and wind um, uh, e economies, which not only will be a future source of a big chunk of our energy requirements, but also a job and economic source. Um, I would do everything I can to protect the primacy of things like the pinelands and the highlands to make sure, which are quite unique gems in our state, almost unlike any other in any other state, uh, particularly given we're the densest state in the nation. So I'd want to make sure that their primacy and their sacredness, if you will, is protected. Um, we need plans in the state. We used to have a state plan. We don't have one. I want to have one when I'm governor, if I'm fortunate enough to get there. An energy master plan we desperately need. A water master plan. In particular, put aside the environmental uh, interests in places that where folks want to push against us in the highlands or the pinelands. Let's accept the sad reality that we have 11 communities in two counties in the state with a higher percentage of kids with lead poisoning than in Flint, Michigan. Uh, so we need an energy master plan, a water master plan, and we'll get on each of those uh, uh, instantly. And lastly, just talk to us for a moment, if, if you would, about uh, clean energy targets and how we get there. Well, targets, the, 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 uh, the most, the top line target is I want to get to as high a percentage of represent, representation by clean energy as fast as possible. We've sort of put targets out from mid-century, which is not that many years away, right? That's only 33 years from now. Um, and I think a big chunk of that's going to be solar and wind. Um, and again, we were not that long ago a nation that, the, a state rather, that the nation looked to and said, you know what, they're leaders. And again, it's beyond just doing the right thing, which it is. It's doing the right thing that's also the smart thing. So I think they are two of our big uh, sources. And we don't talk about it enough, but conservation is a big element here to reduce the denominator. I, I know how we can move the needle in the numerator with things like solar and wind. The question is, do we have the fortitude and the mindset to reduce the denominator, to use less energy? Uh, and there's lots of opportunities. And there has to be a mindset, though, that supports that uh, at the Board of Public Utilities uh, and elsewhere in the state. And that's another thing that I want to remind people of and stand for, that we don't, we don't only have to move the needle away from, a, from an old sort of 19th century, 20th century uh, energy provision model, largely fossil fuel, uh, toward a better future and cleaner future, but also let's 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 support and and propel the initiatives uh, that allow us to use less energy overall. Excellent. I say you covered. It. Thank you, you very much. Thank you. you. Did great. Thank you. This endorsement is really key in the Democratic primary because we need a green governor in um, leadership in New Jersey. And we've seen uh, that elections really matter and that now more than ever, um, it matters for New Jersey that we have someone in place who's gonna lead on protecting our air, protecting our water, protecting our open space and parks for our families. I'm good with that. Are you good with that? that? I think I'm good with that. Are you good with that? I'm great with that. Okay, okay. awesome. It's really exciting for us to be here today to endorse Phil Murphy for the Democratic primary in the gubernatorial election this upcoming year. It's absolutely critical that we do this endorsement and that we support environmental candidates who are going to protect our clean air, drinking water, and our land in New Jersey. We know that the environment and our economy are inextricably linked, and Phil has shown that he acknowledges that as well. 
and it's critically important for us moving forward as we face regulatory rollbacks at the state and federal level and threats to our environment and natural resources in New Jersey that we take a strong stand and educate the voters on the importance of having candidates who protect our environment and fight for what makes New Jersey a great place to live, raise a family, and do business. I think we're good. That was perfect, yeah. And you, and you did hit a couple things that you didn't, which was perfect. Okay. No.